interest rates. As we know, we had another a hike in interest rates last week, the 12th rate hike in a row. It's Well, there was one pause, but 12 rate hikes now since May last year. Uh, it's crushed consumer confidence, it seems. What's that actually going to mean for property prices? I heard across the weekend that, that uh, property prices around the country are still rising. Now, the cash rate sits at 4.1%. Big four banks, as usual, have passed the 12, 12th increase on to their mortgage holders. We had a look around today. The floating rate for most people is probably sitting around 69 or a bit less. Joining me now is a man who knows more about real estate than anyone else, Executive Chairman of Century 21, Charles Tarby. Now, I heard that story at the weekend, Charles, that prices continue to go up. How can that be when we're told the Reserve Bank keeps putting up interest rates to dampen demand? Yes, Steve, look, they say that when an interest rate goes up 1%, uh, the prices come down as much as 1.34%. But we're in a really tricky place right now in that the market is just settling back down to where it should have been. I, we, we talked about this uh, earlier. And I think that what's going to happen is that there's going to be a steady base of price movement. I don't think it's going to go crazy again. I don't think it's going to increase. I think it's definitely going to start to settle down based on what we're seeing with interest rates. And I think that those people who don't have to sell, those that are working harder, those that have had the ability to change their mortgage structure, will probably just sit tight. There are a small uh, sector of, of home buyers that will be in trouble, but the greater majority will probably just sit tight, Steve. I think that's where the prices are going to go to. The top end of the market doesn't seem to be slowing down or cooling down at all, Charles. No, there's a lot of money in that marketplace. When you look at the equity markets, there's still plenty of business activity. People are still doing very, very well. That generally is an area that gets hit the hardest when the market changes, which is interesting because interest rates, when they jump up 1% or 2 or 3%, have a significant impact on people's repayments, not just at the bottom end, but very, very much at the top end. So there's a lot of people that extend their capacity. Uh, they start using more equity in their property and they can reduce repayments in certain ways and I think that's what happens and they'll ride that out. But I don't see a change. I don't see the market crashing. You, you keep hearing the news that the market's going to crash. I don't see that. What I do see is the borrowing capacity of people is reducing each time those interest rates goes up. So therefore their, their ability to buy a property or buy it at a higher price starts to pull back and that's when we might see a change. Charles, you're a deep thinker about these things. I mean, uh, we're being told by the, the new Albanese government that we have a housing, housing crisis in this country, do we? Look, everything that seems to happen out there right now, it just seems to stem from government intervention, whether they're increasing taxes. So you're seeing with Victoria, land tax, Queensland tried to, to do the same thing earlier on. Everything they do seems to be about increasing taxes or increasing revenue rather than reducing costs. The less involvement government has in housing, from what I've seen over the 50 years that I've been in real estate, really is much, much better. All of the things they've proposed over the last few years haven't quite worked. Somebody else comes in, something new, and off we go again. And when you calculate, when you look at the fact that they're talking about 500 million, the Greens are saying we want two and a half billion for housing. What can you do for 500 million? How many properties do you think you can actually provide people who need housing with 500 million? It's nowhere near the number that they're talking about. I don't know where they work all of this out, Steve. I really don't. You mentioned uh, land tax in Victoria. Of course, there's no land tax on second properties in Queensland. So what Victorian property investors are going to simply do is get rid of the property they have in Victoria and invest in Queensland. 400,000 extra Victorians are now going to be charged land tax after the last state budget added a total of 860,000 Victorians are now going to be affected by this. So any property worth, I think it's more than $50,000, which is ridiculous, <laughs> is going to pay a, a land tax. 
Yeah, and, and uh, when you look at the billions of dollars they're going to raise there, this is just a, another example of at what bothers me most about the way the country is run. In my business, if I need to make sure that I don't go into debt, into too great debt or go into overdraft or whatever it is, I'll look at my revenue streams, of course, but I also look at my expenses. I don't just go out there and raise money just by, th by throwing out some new plan to the people I do business with. As a business person, I've got to watch my expenses and all you ever see happening is taxes, 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 instead of going back and running government like a business. They are going to remove so many people interested in property in Victoria and this housing shortage that we have right now is going to be impacted very heavily in Victoria and Melbourne because that's one of the biggest marketplaces out there. So why are they trying to drive people away? You always talk so much sense, Charles Tarby. Thanks for joining us, mate.